What's up guys? I'm freaking amped up, so I wanted to make a video. I'm stone cold sober right now, but I'm energized. And why am I energized? Because, well, some of us have a purpose on this planet. And one of my purposes is to make people think that rats are cool. And like, why, why would you hate rats? They're tiny little fuzzy missiles made of blubber and love. Why would you hate that? Yeah, sometimes, sure, you might have to kill a rat, right? But it doesn't mean you can't love them. And another, another purpose, to make people realize that sometimes when they look in the mirror, they're not sure if they're looking at themselves or if they're looking at a plant. And there's a key thing that's crazy about plants. And you're going to learn that today. This is the most important thing you're going to learn today. I guarantee it. You're going to be smarter than an MIT graduate if you just pay attention to this little itty bitty PowerPoint. What a promise. I'm a wizard. I'm a doctor. My mentor knighted me as a wizard. I'm going to try to find that video. Okay, let's get into this. What are we talking about today? We're talking about how to click the PowerPoint presentation. We're talking about where do plants get their mass from? How are plants similar to us? What are plants made of? Like seriously, what is this thing made out of right here? Look at this thing. Crazy. That's the tree of life right there. What's it made out of? We'll get into photosynthesis. I'm sure you were bored to death by that word in your middle school or high school class. And right now you're like intrigued. Huh? Ah, and then I'm going to talk about just some fun things that I like about plants. How crazy they are. And then I'm going to show you this video of MIT students making fools of themselves. All right, plants are super, super similar to us. You think of them as being very different, but look, life's been kicking around this planet for about 3.7 billion years. And plants and animals separated about 450 million years ago. It's nothing. It's nothing. We're like brothers. We only got a fungus cousin in the middle. Okay. Once upon a time, one of these decided to swallow one of these. And then it made all of these. We got this thing called a common ancestor right there. Boom. Yeah, we're more closely related to, to a mushroom than we are to a tree. But it, it's not that big of a difference. Okay? So we're super freaking similar. And let's dig into that some more. We have a lot in common with plants. We both got mouths, bro. I bet you didn't know that. I got a piranha plant right here. Yeah, that boy got a big mouth up there, but all on its leaves, it's got mouths called stomata. They look like little hot dog buns. Well, I'll talk about that more in a second. We're both made out of cells. Boom, the list just keeps on growing. Plus, sure, plant cells are a little bit different. They got a vacuole and a cell wall and these little chloroplast things. But they got mitochondria just like we do. They got a nucleus just like we do. They got a rough ER just like we do. They got a smooth ER just like we do. They got a Golgi apparatus just like we do. They got cytoskeleton just like we do. They got DNA just like we do. They got RNA just like we do. They got proteins just like we do. They got more in common with us than they got different. Okay, we're both photosynthetic. We can make shit out of light. That's crazy. Plants make sugar out of light. And we make vitamin D. Go out in the sun, 10, 20 minutes a day, boom, you got your vitamin D. Just like that. You're a photosynthetic machine. You make stuff from light. That's wild. Just like plants. We both got reproductive organs. You know what I'm saying? We like to get it on. Plants are kinky, dude. Plants have a threesome to get it on. Most plants, flowering plants, like they'll usually have like a bird in the mix or like a little ant or a bee or something. Be like, yeah, I like a kinky. Give me a different species to like help me with the sex. It's kind of weird. And they each have behavior. Plants be crawling around, talking to each other, feeding each other, all kinds of crazy stuff just like we do. I'm, I'm going to make a whole nother video about that, about plant behavior. Some crazy stuff. Okay, and obviously we got behavior. I'm freaking yelling at you through a mic about how plants are freaking crazy and just like us 
All right. So this is how I like to think about plants. They're just really slow worms that eat the air. I don't think of them as plants. Like this thing right here. Look at this thing. Look at this weird worm, bro. Look at that thing. This thing is a worm. It's real slow. It's doing worm business. And I like to talk to it. And I like to touch it. Because that's what I like to do with worms. I like to talk to worms. And I like to touch worms. So touch your plants. Talk to your plants. Don't put your plants on a hook and try to catch a fish with it. That's mean. Okay, so what are plants made out of? They're made out of sugar. Um, I, I, I got this other little plant right here. And then I got this. Okay, that also comes from a plant. Plants are made out of sugar. So if we look at a leaf, we look at this little leaf right here. That thing's made out of sugar. Okay, so if we look in, zoom in on that leaf, boom, we got cells. If we zoom in on the outside, the cell walls. Boom, this is what it looks like, inside, outside. And we got these big, long fibers in there, big bundles, like a big old suspension bridge bundle, just cables wrapped up and wrapped up and wrapped up. And we look in there, it's made out of all these little cellulose chains is what they call them in science, cellulose chains, all right? And that's just a chain of sugar, of a glucose molecule, okay? That's wild. That's actually crazy. This wood here, that's the sugar. I can't eat it though because it's really hard and I don't have the, the enzymes to break this little bond right here. I don't got the little molecular teeth to break that, but stuff like termites do. That means wood is made out of sugar. That means your house is made out of sugar. That means you're a weird gingerbread person that lives in a sugar house. That's freaking weird. You are living in a candy house. Okay. How do plants build themselves? They build themselves out of the freaking thin air. So this is the little molecular formula for good old photosynthesis. All right. So we take six carbon dioxide from the air, which is what we breathe out. Six waters, add a little sunlight, boom, you get a sugar. That's glucose. And then you get oxygen, the stuff we breathe in. The CO2 comes in through the leaves and the water comes in through the roots. All right. And on the leaves, the CO2 comes in through these tiny little mouths. There's hundreds of them on the bottom of a leaf. So if you ever flip a leaf over and look at it, you're just, there's a bunch of mouths there just staring at you. Just saying, rah, rah, feed me Seymour. I'm Audrey too. All right. It's crazy. So this, the water comes up through the roots. Because these tiny little mouths are going, like if you go like this, on a mirror, let's see if this will work. Let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. All right, we got a mirror. Look at, now you're looking at yourself. All right. Wow, you look great. All right. Boom, out of my mouth came a bunch of water vapor. That's the same thing that's coming out of plant, plant mouths is water vapor. They're like letting all the water out. So a plant is acting like a big straw and it's just sucking the water out of the ground and then it evaporates out. And that's essentially how the plant pumps its cardiovascular system. The entire plant runs on evaporation. All right. All right. So the plant is taking in carbon dioxide and water. What the heck are these things doing? Look at these little mouths. Look at them. They're like talking to me like, hey, what's up? What are you doing? How are you doing? I'm just doing photosynthesis. How does any of this work? What's going on? What is the CO2 and what is the water? Well, let's look at this. This looks like a complicated figure. I'm going to break it down right here. CO2 is the building block of sugar. All right, let's go back and look at the sugar. That's just a bunch of carbons and oxygens and hydrogens. Look, C6H12O6, that's glucose. All right, so we take this and some of those, boom. Bango. That's what we get. All right. Most of the mass in a plant, you're just snapping these together like six Legos. Now you got a glucose. Six Legos, you got a glucose. These are the building blocks, the Legos. The H2O, what we're doing for that, the plant, what it's doing, it's stripping off the electrons. And then it's running a pump with them. Stripping off the electrons. H2O is an electron fuel source. You also use the protons and pump them around and then slap them through ATP synthase, blah, 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 to get ATP. All right. 
So we're stripping the electrons off of H2O. Oh, what are you left with? O2. That, that's, what the, that's what the plant breathes out, and that's what we breathe in. And then with a little light, and you run this little process through a little complicated thing called the electron transport chain. Boom, you get ATP and an electron carrier. Use those to power snapping these CO2 into a sugar. The CO2 is where the, the plant is getting its mass from. Okay? You take CO2, light, and H2O, the building block, the electron source, and the energy source to cause all these reactions to occur. Boom, you can make glucose. And then you got these cellulose fibers. And then you got these big old cellulose fibers. And then you got cell walls. And then you got a plant. You got a leaf. Plants are built out of the air. So plants are like this. It's like this piranha plant from Mario Brothers, but instead of eating an Italian plumber's butt, they're eating carbon dioxide. And then they're going, whoa, I'm growing. Plants eat the air. They're really slow worms that eat the air. Don't look at this part right here. Don't look right here. This is a bad part to look at. Okay, don't look there. So when I look at something like a palm tree, I don't see a plant. I see a really slow worm with thousands of mouths stripping electrons off of water and snapping together CO2 up here, eating the air, just filter feeding. Like some kind of sea coral or something. Just filter feeding like an anemone, like an animal. It's crazy. Plants get their mass straight up out of the thin air. Plants are also pretty cool in other ways. This is another cool thing that I like about plants. One, this is the little structure, the little molecule that, what does it do? It absorbs light. This is how plants absorb light to power that process to build sugar. And what's crazy about it, this chlorophyll molecule, it looks just like a flower. Isn't that beautiful? I find that absolutely gorgeous. Look at it. It's just like a little flower. And that's the thing that allows them, that allows flowers to exist. Isn't that weird? I think that's really weird. Okay, plants are also super cheap. They're real penny pinchers. They're frugal as could be. All right? You look at a tree, be like, dang, that's a frugal little slow worm that eats the air. Uh, so if you ever look outside in the fall and you see a deciduous tree and you see all of its beautiful, all the beautiful colors of fall. Oh, it's so beautiful. No, it's not beautiful. That's a cheap motherfucker saving its money, saving its chlorophyll. So what the plants are doing is they're taking, look at this molecule, it's huge. I don't even know how many carbons that is. It's massive. What they're doing is they're saving it. They're sucking it out of the leaves to put it down in their trunk or to break it down and reuse it or to get energy out of it. So they're sucking all this chlorophyll out. <sighs> out of the leaf. You can see it's like coming out of the leaf. It's going down into the stem and then getting sucked back in. And so then the other molecules that are left in the leaf are now reflecting light to us. So this is what a normal leaf or what chlorophyll uh, looks like if we put it through a little spectrophotometer or a spectrophotometer. So light is made up of different wavelengths, either really close together, 400 nanometers, or really far apart, like 700 nanometers. This is like violet, purpley, and then this is red, orange. Okay, so plants, chlorophyll, absorbs a lot here in kind of the purpley blue spectra. And it absorbs a lot in kind of the reddy orange, even into yellow. But it doesn't absorb a lot in green. So here's a crazy thing to think about. Plants absorb purpley blue and they absorb red to yellow. So they're sucking that light in. They are that light. And they reflect. Ha! They bounce back the green. So they're saying, ah, I'm actually not green. I'm not green. They're reflecting that light to us. And then our, it hits our eyes, it hits our retinas, and then we see them as green. But plants really aren't green. Plants are really mostly purpley, blue, reddy, orange, yellow. That's the light that they're absorbing. I think that's weird. That's really weird. Plants aren't green. They say, no, I'm not green. I reflect that to you. 
I don't want that. It's useless. Okay. Here's some other crazy thing about plants. Plants are just batteries that are storing the sun's energy. So where did all of this come from? It came from the air and it is carbon dioxide snapped together into a sugar from the sun's energy. The sun's energy powered that. So then if I take that, I take this big battery and I cut it down and I burn it. What do I get? I get energy. I get heat. I get essentially the solar energy coming back out in the form of light, right? Heating up gas. I, I get light coming out of that and I get heat. And then I also get the same stuff that I put right into it. Through combusting it, I get H2O and CO2 and heat. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so what happens if I eat an apple? Same stuff. I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing combustion of that apple in my dang stomach, in my dang cells, in my dang mitochondria. I'm releasing H2O and CO2. So another way to think about plants is not only are they batteries that store the sun's energy, but they're just condensed air waiting to become gas again. It's like a whole biological system that just condenses the gas in the air into a solid. And then it's waiting to be re-released -re -re as a gas. It's pretty crazy too. Okay. All right. Look, I'm, I'm going to chill out. I'm going to go take a nap or something. You guys made it to the end. Where do plants get their mass from? They get it from the air. They get it from carbon dioxide in the air. Let's watch this video of these people embarrassing themselves. I hope I hope this audio is working. If not, that's I, now, it's fine. Now, where did all that stuff come from? Nature. In the ground, the soil, the grass, the dirt. What would you say to someone who told you that the weight of the tree came mostly from the carbon dioxide in the air? I said that's very disturbing and um, wonder how that could it happen. It is disturbing. I agree with her came from carbon dioxide from the air? Um, oops. Some interesting idea. Sounds weird. <laughs> Are you surprised yeah. at that idea? Yep. That'd be hard to believe because carbon dioxide is, well, it's a gas and it doesn't seem like, it doesn't seem intuitive that you could add mass taking in a gas. Uh-huh. Doesn't seem intuitive. And yet that's how it is. And you're just walking past plants and not even, you're walking on them and you're not even appreciating them. Look at this plant. That thing is eating the air back there. That corn plant is eating the air through light magic. Guys, I'm gonna go take a cold bath. I hope you learned something there.